Secretary, uh, Department of uh, Science and Technology, Dr. Uh, Yen, yes, uh, Chandrasekhar ji, Chairman of uh, MG uh, NCRE, uh, Dr. W.G. Prasnakumar ji, uh, ladies, gentlemen, uh, equally important is the young students. I'm uh, very impressed uh, when uh, Natraji was explaining to me uh, just before the call started that we have as many as about 700 to 800 of the students online. Very thrilled to uh, uh, talk to you uh, today. I'll probably spend about 12 minutes or so, 12 to 15 minutes to uh, share a few thoughts of mine in this uh, auspicious uh, occasion. Before I do that, uh, first let me thank uh, the Samkruti Foundation for uh, inviting me uh, to this uh, event uh, to celebrate uh, the uh, birth anniversary of Netaji uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. It is uh, special in many ways because uh, we also celebrate uh, this year Azadi Ki Amrit Mahotsav primarily the 75 years of independent India. And uh, Netaji played a very important role uh, for what we are today. Equally important is it also comes at a point of time uh, when uh, the fortnight celebrations of uh, Swami Vivekananda's birth anniversary also happens. I believe it happens between the 12th and 27th of January every year. And this falls very much uh, in uh, uh, that particular uh, period. And the third point is that I was very impressed with uh, the topic that was uh, chosen uh, for uh, this uh, gathering today. And uh, as all of you have uh, heard, read, it says Viveka Subhashitam. The way in which I went ahead and uh, interpreted is that uh, Swami Vivekananda who brought in a lot of wisdom to us. Viveka is wisdom in Sanskrit. And uh, Subhash, which is a part of uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, or other way of, repre re uh, of representing it is uh, the eloquent lessons that have flown from to us. It makes it complete Subhashitam. So it is basically what we learned from Swamiji or what Swamiji taught the universe. One of the biggest beneficiary, of course, was Netaji too, like many of us. And how uh, we thereafter uh, make sure that this gets percolated for many more generations to come. If you look at the life of Swamiji and Netaji, uh, Swamiji as a saint philosopher and Netaji as uh, a spiritual patriot. The overlap between the lives of these two people was fairly small. Uh, 19, um, uh, the early part of the 20th century, there was just about an overlap of five years. But the influence uh, Swami Vivekananda had on Netaji was profound. Bottom line is fairly simple. Uh, philosophers disappear, but their philosophical writings are good forever. Uh, as uh, Swami Vivekananda himself said, work on to death, I'm with you, and uh, when gone, my spirit will work with uh, you. That's what Swami Vivekananda said. So Netaji was very strongly inspired by the lessons of uh, Swami uh, Vivekananda, as well as uh, uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And uh, the, uh, the amount of in-depth study that Netaji did uh, brought an enormous amount of patriotism from these learnings uh, and brought in more amount of spiritual awareness into Netaji, which uh, was largely achieved through the in-depth uh, study of these two great saints. So if you look at the basic philosophy that uh, Netaji himself says is, uh, 
I learned from them how to love and worship the country as a divine mother, offering everything to her lotus feet for um, his own liberation, as well as the liberation of his entire race. Netaji says that he saw in Swamiji a pathfinder, a spiritual father of the modern nationalistic movement and followed to become the, as I said earlier, the spiritual patriot. So if you look at uh, areas which are very relevant to our conversation, with especially the young 700 to 800 uh, students that we have with us, I picked up three learnings and I'll spend some time on those three learnings. The common thread that inspired uh, Netaji from Swami's uh, uh, writings was one was youth development and nation building. The second was enormous amount of importance for education. And the third one was women upliftment, uh, which actually continue to be very, very critical for um, our uh, nation building as we speak, in spite of the fact that we are celebrating, <clears throat> excuse me, the Azadi Ki Amrit Mahotsav at this point of time. Uh, if you look at um, the perception of Swamiji as well as Netaji, both recognize there's a, there's a vast potential in youth power and uh, they strove to awaken the men and women of Bharat. That's what they did. And there is a more reason for us to awaken the youth of India at this point of time. As some of you may be aware, India now has the enormous amount of advantage of what is commonly known as a demographic dividend. What is that? If the working age population, that's between 16 years to 60 years, approximately that uh, bracket, if that age group of people are higher than the rest of the population in the country, it is considered to be a dividend that the nation can possess. We have seen examples of this happening with um, China, Japan, Korea, and so on and so forth. And we currently enjoy that, which means, to, and look at it today, the average age of an Indian is 28 years. We just want to understand that further, it's 37 years in China and 38 years in the United States. So we have enormous amount of youth, younger generation, which can be a boom to a nation, primarily because they can help us in terms of the economic growth. And certainly if the economic growth has to happen, it's just not people. We need to have education and we have to have them gainfully employed. So um, Swamiji is teaching further, in addition to these two, I'm saying education and employment. Swamiji's teachings further talk, taught us all about self-respect, self-confidence, and self-assertion. So the key to it, to all my young friends, my message is character becomes very important. Values to me are foundation to my success. Values to me do not change. In our, my corporate world, I am a founder of a company, so pardon me, I won't name the company, but the foundation we keep saying to people is values first, F-I-R-S-T, which is fairness, integrity, respect, transparency, or sincerity and transparency. So big message to you and what the learnings that we have from Swamiji too is that please build your character. Please make sure that we have no compromise on our values. So the uh, struggle for independence has its aim for removal of triple bondage of it was the political, which we achieved, economic somewhat, social somewhat, the oppression that we suffered over a period of time. So understandably to uplift this economic and social um, uh, challenges we have, I think the Indian government truly, the current um, uh, prime minister, uh, Modiji's government announced uh, a uh, ambitious 
plan of Atmanirbhar Bharat, which is again going back to the Swadeshi movement in the past, or even if you go further down, the self-reliant India. So therefore, I think there is enormous amount of need for us to build a self-reliant India, which is basically you have youth on one side, and if you want to do the nation building, we should create those opportunities to have a Bharat, which is self-reliant. So since uh, I have doc the honor of having Dr. Chandrasekhar also on this call, who is one of the most eminent scientists that I know of, enormous amount of work that he has done in research and development. And now he takes on this, uh, uh, the topmost position in leading science and technology uh, for India. My request to him is, can we promote, can we accelerate the R&D investments? Can we accelerate um, more amount of research to be done? Can we motivate them? Um, I work with the IITs, um, it's been said. So we are trying to see, can we monetize what we put in this R&D effort? So some of these initiatives, because if you want to become self-reliant, we have to produce here. We have to design, we have to engineer, we have to manufacture, uh, only, and we maintain. Only then we will have a self-reliant India. The second point I like to make is that if you want to do this, we also need to have more amount of innovation, which leads me into the second topic called education. Uh, how does innovation come? Uh, innovation comes in, in a very simple terms that I keep saying, you question, challenge the status quo. Why does it happen this way? Why do I need to import? Why do I need to produce uh, better products in India? Why don't I do better services in India? So, but then the key to it is education. I think somehow, for some reason, uh, not so well explainable, is that we have all been accustomed to rote learning. We learn and then we vomit. So my big message back to my children, my uh, uh, students uh, on the call today is move away from that. We need to develop a scientific temper. We need to be persistent with our ideas. We need to challenge why, why, why five times. We need to work in teams. Only then will we see innovation come by. To me, uh, uh, working hard is never a challenge because working hard does not make people tired. Working hard makes only people smarter. So therefore, if we want to uh, develop ourselves, I think the key to it for our students is, as um, Swamiji said and Netaji said, if education has to be one of the key pillars for this nation, the youth has to become a lot more participative in ensuring that we become a self-reliant nation. Here's yet another clue to my good student friends. And that is that technology is now enabling us to learn from anywhere, anytime, any topic, it doesn't mean that I need to go sit in a classroom to go and learn all about a particular topic. Whatever comes to my mind, whatever I think is incentive for me to learn, I can learn. I belong to a generation. I went to IIT Kanpur and I had an intent to learn something. I went to the library. That's the only source of knowledge that was there. You see a nice library behind me, all right. That probably is one of the reasons I built one. And then what would happen? The book is not found in the library. It's not found in the library. What do you do? Go to the librarian. And the librarian tells you that, you know, it will take three more weeks before you get the book because somebody has already taken it. So after you have an intent to learn, you wait for as many as three weeks before you can learn. What's the world we live in today? You tell me a topic. In another one hour, I'll come back with you at least with basics because I have the ability to reach out to the knowledge and assimilate that knowledge and disseminate back to you. This leads me into the other one. No nation, they said, youth has to do nation building. But the youth has two parts to it, two faces to it, the men and the women. And I think as a nation, we have to start respecting our women a lot more than what we have done. Diversity and inclusion has to become essential part for nation building. We have seen anywhere, and I see, keep saying this very loudly, 
no nation, no state, no family, no association has ever prospered without an equal participation from women. So I think there's an imperative need for every one of us to encourage it. There could be a number of things people talk about as the fallout of pandemic, but one good for negative fallouts of pandemic, one positive fallout that we all see now is that there is something called work from home. And the work from home, we think, will make it a lot more, it, uh, it will enable a lot more women to start participating in the corporate world. So therefore, I think it becomes extremely important for every one of us to encourage women participation. So what are the key three Subhashitams I have for today, the Viveka Subhashitams, three of them, is empowering the youth for nation building. We need to improve our education system and finally bring in upliftment of women. Again, thank you very much to uh, Samskriti Foundation for inviting me. And I wish all the very best to my uh, student friends on the call. I keep saying that I'm sure you all see it too, that I am past uh, reflection of small reflections, my gray hair or little hair that's left behind. But what I see in front of my eyes is my future. You are my future. The fact that I see some of those shining eyes and smiling faces makes me believe that my future is safe in your hands. God bless you. Thank you.